Hello and welcome back to the MLB DFS Slate Breakdown for Monday, June 17th. We are getting close to uh, prime summer baseball here, which means weather heating up, more runs, more fun for DFS. Now we're going to get into today's slate, but before we do, we will go through yesterday's perfect lineups and winning lineups. And as always, come join us at LionStar3999 per month. Gets you access to everything you do. All the props, all the DFS. We got it all. One low price for all the sports we cover. We also have the good old 239.99 yearly option, which will give you, make it only 20 bucks a month, which is a steal. So... I suggest you get involved in that if you have never tried us out. Go through the app stores, either Android or iOS. You have an option of seven free days if you haven't tried us. You can see what it's all about. See if you like the platform. Then uh, pony up for that year uh, subscription. Now, let's get into the slate a little bit. We'll start off by going over the perfect lineup on FanDuel. And Bailey Ober was the pitcher you wanted. And then we had a two-man Baltimore stack with a bunch of one-offs. Pete Alonzo went nuts. Altuve went nuts. Uh, Ellie De La Cruz went nuts. Jose Siri got one. Dalton Varsho, Carlos Correa just continued his absolutely scorching bat. Look at this uh, last couple weeks. Just a couple giant giant games from him so it's been uh been fun to watch him he's been on fire and then the winning lineup for uh good old fan duel went to air clark dc 258.9 mitchell parker was the pitcher so paid down a little bit 8300 very low own pitching wasn't that great yesterday so it makes sense there uh Ober was cheaper, so there was definitely room to beat this guy, but he crushed it with the hitting. We had a four-man twin stack, had Altuve. This twin stack just went nuts. Carlos Santana, 34. Royce Lewis, 24. Carlos Correa, almost 44. Buxton, 12.2. Then uh, two Mets with uh, Lindor and Nimmo, and Lane Thomas got it done. Lineup was super contrarian. They got first place. Congrats to them. And uh, won by just a giant margin, too. And there was still room to better his lineup. But all in all, congrats to him. Did a great job. And let's move it on to uh, DK to see what we got over there. So, Ronel Blanco and Bailey Ober were the two pitchers you needed. In this game, in this on DraftKings, we didn't have the Colorado and Pittsburgh game, which changed things a lot from an owner's ownership perspective. But uh, hitting wise, two man Baltimore stack, and then all one offs. Uh, actually, sorry, two two man twins also. And then the winning lineup went to Corolla four two zero nine one, who won by five points. They had Tyler McGill, had Corbin Burns, both had decent games here. And then they had a Mets stack that was a four-man Mets stack. And then all one-offs. They had uh, Kowser get it done. Barger, who was just cheap and, you know, did enough for uh, Toronto. JD just continued to torch the uh, Padres as well as Lindor and Alonzo and Torrens. Tampa Bay's Brandon Lowe and Royce Lewis, who has just been on absolute fire. I think he has seven home runs in 12 games this year. Just absolutely insane. But congrats to him. Way to do it. Now let's get into this slate. Get into some uh, ownership and projected uh, pitchers here. First, I want to talk about the slate as a whole for a little bit. Colorado, we got a Dodger team going into Colorado. It is over 90 degrees and the winds are blowing out to left field at like 13 miles an hour. So that is going to be very good hitting weather. Uh, in Wrigley, same thing over 90 degrees winds blowing out to, uh, left, sorry, uh, Colorado's winds blowing out to right. Wrigley is winds blowing out to left field at double digits. 
both are going to be a big boost to home run uh, chances, as well as the San Diego versus uh, Phillies game, where super warm there. Winds aren't as strong, but they are blowing out towards center a little bit, and great home run situation there as well. Those are definitely going to be the, you know, the three highest prioritized uh, games but doesn't mean that a winning stack can't come from another one. So we'll break all that down, get into it. So first, you say Kikuchi. Kikuchi, 8,600, 19-point projection, 2.2x. As you see, pitchers are pretty spread out today, and I think ownership is going to end up being spread out on these guys as well for that. But Kikuchi's in a great spot, 4.5 stars. Uh, nice little... Uh, spot for him for sure he hasn't been as good as he was to start the season but last couple games he uh stepped it up a little bit here and this is a boston team that is not great versus lefties also it's hard to run on a lefty so their speed and their propensity to try and steal bases will be a little bit declined today because kikuchi is a lefty now kikuchi 3.3 FIP over the last 20 starts with a 24.5% K rate. Boston strikes out a lot. I think Kikuchi's in a fine spot. I don't mind taking some. I wouldn't worry about the BVP numbers as, you know, it's just not that many at bats versus them or versus this lineup. Uh, all in all, 21% combined K rate. I'm fine going with some Kikuchi. I... Don't love it. Don't hate it. I'm good with it. Nick Pavetta, 8,300, 2.2x. I love this upside for Pavetta. 32.5% uh, K rate, mid three FIP, over the short term, 2.91 FIP. So he's been pitching really well. He does allow a lot of fly balls. He's versus Toronto team who, over the last 20 games versus righties, 318 Woba, 140 ISO, just nothing really to write home about the only thing that they've been really good offensively is just not striking out very much so the k rate is down a little bit but i got a side with uh pavetta's you know big time k rate in this spot and if we look at what uh, pavetta has done versus them he's been decent i mean in three of the four games last year he was over 17 points two of them at uh, 19 points I think the possibility for six plus K's is very high uh, for him in this spot. And I don't mind going with some Pavetta. Uh, next, Paul Skeens. I mean, hard not to fade this guy. So he has a 35% K rate. His K line on sports books right now is eight and a half. While it's uh, under is minus 170. So, you know, you, you have like a what, probably 70% chance or 65% chance of uh, him being under. It's still a super, super high line, and there's definitely a good shot he can get to 9+. plus 25% K rate versus righties. Combined K rate's almost 30. You just don't see a 30% combined K rate very often. Clearly, the best upside on this slate is Paul Skeens at 9,500, 2.3x value, 22 uh, point projection he is our second highest projection he probably should be up there more near the top uh 22 k are owned i'm totally fine with going him to him next we got max freed 9800 versus the tigers who just aren't that great of an offense i don't mind going here whatsoever freed has been on fire for the last month month plus uh 2.7 fit 25 percent k rate over that short term and I think he can do that again in this spot. I definitely am interested in some freed. Now, the weather is very warm in Atlanta today. It is back to hot Atlanta summer temps, but at least the wind is blowing in to uh, help those fly balls stay in the stadium a little bit. So uh, definitely interested in some freed. Next, we got David Peterson versus Texas. Look, Texas lineup versus lefties hasn't been very good, but... Peterson's been pretty bad when he's been away, and there's just not much strikeout upside. I know he's only 6K. He's at 2.3X, so he's going to 
land in some optimizer spots, but I just don't love him. I think there's so many different ways we can go with lineups today. And with pitchers, I think I would rather go with, you know, uh, Freed and Skeens and an 8K guy uh, than I would trying to push in Sonny Gray and go with in David Peterson for the sec- second one. I think I would rather the two shots of big time upside than just one uh, today with my lineups. And Peterson just doesn't have that big time upside. For that reason, I'm kind of out on him, even though he is 6K. Uh, I just think he's getting a little over owned in this spot with so many other guys. Next, we got Sonny Gray, 10.5K. Marlins have been terrible. Uh, but Gray has fallen off a little bit. However, he still has a 2.19 FIP over his last five starts, a 2.8 over his last 20, 34% K rate over his last five, 29.6 over his last 20. He's still in a very good spot. 10.5 K 29% uh, combined K rate. The one thing I got to bring up is he's averaging way less fantasy points per game away. We are away. However, this is a very pitcher friendly park. And most of the places he has pitched away this year, Milwaukee, tough place to uh, pitch versus a decent offense, Philadelphia, tough place uh, to pitch at times. So I don't mind going uh, with some Sonny Gray. We have him at 2.4x, 25% uh, or 25 point projection is the highest we have. So at a little bit lower ownership, he is very interesting and I'm fine going there, but I'm definitely not trying to prioritize him and push him. I don't think he's that much different than, say, a Max Freed, Skeens, Pavetta, Gucci. But those guys are definitely all my uh, top picks. Javier Assad, he's been really good, uh, but we have a big time total in this. My issue is he was forcing a lot of ground balls. More fly balls are happening We were waiting for some regression to come, and it came a little bit. If you want to go there, fine. Nobody is going to go here, Uh, but I am a little bit, a little scared to go here. I am probably not going to make it uh, to Assad very much, but we do have him at 2.3x. There's 18-point projection. There's mathematical reasons to want to go to Assad. There's game theory reasons. I think for those reasons, you got to at least consider him. Jordan Hicks, uh, I'm not really going to go here, but there's all those same reasons game theory wise to consider him. He's been good. Uh, My issue with him is that the Giants have been pulling him quick and he hasn't been getting deep into games. For that reason, I'm out. Uh, John Gray. Look, Mets have been very good the last, what, five games or so. John Gray has been pitching well, 3.37 FIP over his last 20, 2.96 over his last five. K rate, 24%, 22%. One thing is he's averaging less fantasy points while at home. They are at home. Uh, but Mets haven't been great versus righties. I think it's an interesting spot, and I don't mind taking some shots here, but definitely not trying to go overboard. But there is some potential to have a lone pitcher go you know, 20 plus points at 7.9 K Braxton Garrett versus the Cardinals. If you want to go here, it's absolutely fine. He is way worse at home. He has been inconsistent this year, but the FIP has stayed solid. There is a little strikeout upside when he gets it going. I just don't love the spot for him. Uh, but you could do worse. The Cardinals offense just frankly, isn't that great. Paxton in Colorado, kind of out on him. Soriano, I think, is a little interesting. He's had some big games, been pitching pretty well. 3.48 ERA this uh, year and 3.8 fit, 3.76 over the last five. The K rate is the only thing here. There's not big time upside in the spot, and Milwaukee hits lefties hard. Uh Reese Olsen is probably the only guy I would consider down here. Now, we do have wind blowing in, but it is very warm. Uh, Reese is okay. The issue with this play for me is this Braves team is one that we have seen not hit very well for months now. 
However, over the last two or three days, they started hitting. So I'm a little concerned this team is starting to turn it on. And for that reason, I don't know if I really want to go to Reese Olsen when there's so many other pitchers I like, but I, he is at least a guy I am considering to play a little bit. Uh, with that being said, I don't mind playing some Braves either because we've seen Reese get blown up. Uh, give up five runs versus Washington, eight runs versus Milwaukee, five runs versus Boston. Only two versus KC, but uh, six versus pittsburgh we've seen him have those big blow-up games and there's usually some home runs a lot of hits allowed in those games so a lot of ways for uh, teams to score some fantasy points and when he's been way worse away makes it a little bit a little interesting for sure now let's get over to FanDuel, check it out over here see what we got our highest owned pitcher paul skeens 10.3k and as I said, he has all the upside in the world in this spot. So definitely considering some skeins. Kikuchi, 9.6K is a little higher than I really would have wanted for him on, uh, on FanDuel, but I'm still okay going there. Sonny Gray at 11K, his projection is six points higher than anybody. So for that reason alone, you have to uh, consider him. The thing is that uh, it all depends on the stacks you want to go with. The Dodgers are going to be way cheaper than they generally are because there's not going to be Mookie Betts. Uh, with that being said, they're also in Colorado, and we see this Colorado team that can't hit hit well in Colorado. So all those other guys that the Dodgers have in their lineups start to look a little more interesting uh, with the Colorado weather and elevation and all that. Max Freed, love his spot. The chance of him being at six plus innings is extremely high. Uh, chance he goes to seven or eight innings is absolutely possible. And if he's doing that with a 25% K rate like he's had over the last five games, it's going to look really interesting. I think there's absolutely a path to him going, you know, seven innings, six Ks, and one or two earned runs. And that's going to give you a chance to win a slate for sure. Or at least not lose one. That's that's for sure, too. Assad, I'm not really going there. But like I said on DraftKings, there are plenty of reasons to consider him and play him. And our projection is high enough. And with nobody going there, for that reason alone, you got to consider playing him. Nick Pavetta, I'm absolutely interested in. He's not getting the, the projection we like on for us or on consensus, which makes me think he's going to go totally unowned. Uh, makes me like him a little bit more. I think there's K upside in his spot. That K rate alone makes me consider him, and he's 1K less than Skeens, or 1.7K less than uh, Sonny Gray. So definitely of some interest there. Now uh, let's get into stacks. All right, so the highest value stack of the day, we got Texas, which you generally don't see versus David Peterson. I think that's a little interesting. As we saw on DraftKings, Peterson is getting some ownership. So there's some leverage going here. It is an explosive offense. There is some talent, some speed on that back half. Uh, so I'm, I'm a bit intrigued to go uh, with Rangers for sure. Miami is popping up, which is a leverage stack versus Sonny Gray, who will be, you know, fairly high owned. Pittsburgh versus Carson Spears. Now, Spears been really good. 3.3 FIP over his last 20, 2.56 over his last five. I uh, don't love picking on him, but he's not going to stay in this game for long. And there's nice hitting weather in Pittsburgh as well. I would be surprised if Pittsburgh made it past the fifth in or Spears made it past the uh, fifth inning. Boston's popping up versus Kikuchi, which is an interesting play for sure. The reason being is what we have seen from Kikuchi in the years past and really over the last couple starts is he has hiccups. And when he has hiccups, home runs come and he allows some runs. You can get that at, uh, you know, a cheaper value with some upside. My one issue here, Kikuchi's a lefty and 
Boston is getting a lot of their points from stealing bases lately, and it just makes it way, way harder. Uh, Cardinals versus Braxton Garrett. I'm fine with that. Garrett's ERA is 5.61 over his last five. Now his FIP has been way better, but he's kind of been like that for a while, and we haven't seen that positive regression. So maybe there's just something going on with him that's a little off. And then Angels popping up versus uh, Carlos Rodriguez here. Uh, I don't love it. Don't hate it. You can go there if you want. And let's get over to the highest owned stacks for the day. No surprise. Dodgers almost 100% owned, uh, which means, you know, you got five guys that roughly all all of them are going to be like 28% owned, or sorry, 18% owned or so, at least for an average ownership number, super high owned stack. You can absolutely go there. However, everybody else is going to be there. Now, Cal Quintrall has been very good versus righties. Towards lefties, he's given it up a little bit. So Freeman, Otani, both look very good. Teoscar Hernandez, the guy that crushes lefties, and Quintrall's a righty. Will Smith has just been on fire all season. Don't mind taking him either. All in all, Dodgers look fine. Dodgers are in a great spot. I would just try and get different with the stack a little bit. Uh, try and, you know, lower your ownership a little bit. Maybe don't have all three of Otani, Hernandez, and Freeman. Hope one of those, one of those guys fails and use some other guys to get the stack and get it going. Uh, makes a lot of sense to me. Now, highest projected here. Other thing I got to say is the Colorado guys in Colorado always go under owned. Um, Colorado's plus 140. It's not like they're giant underdogs. They can absolutely win this game. There's a game total of 12, and those guys go under under owned. Uh, Dodgers also popping up as the highest projected stack. No surprise due to the fact that it's in Colorado. But we got some Mets popping up versus John Gray, some Reese Olsen uh, versus Atlanta, all of which I think are interesting. And then Philadelphia versus Randy Vasquez. I think this is a great stack today. Vasquez simply has been shit. And uh, FIP shows it. 5.1 pretty much over his last 20 and over his last five. Now the ERA over his last 20 is only 3.91, but he's not been good this year. We got nice hitting weather. There is definitely home run hitting weather, and Philadelphia has some pop. So I'm intrigued to go there for sure. Uh, Milwaukee versus Soriano. Soriano's been good, but you can he can get got. He can get got. And let's check out uh, the highest ceiling prior to clicking the overview to go over some other stack sitches. And Boston with the highest ceiling versus Yusei Kikuchi. Uh, Dodgers, obviously, Mets as well popping up here. And highest implied run total, Dodgers at 6.4. Colorado's at 5.6. So Colorado's right there. The game we didn't talk about at all, Cubs versus Giants. Look, Jordan Hicks has been solid. But he's allowing a lot of hard contact. There's warm weather. Winds are blowing out to left field. And he hasn't been staying in the game very long. After that, you get a Giants bullpen that's just not very good. 4.09 ERA with 126 whip. I think Cub stacks are very interesting. They're not popping up on our higher own ones. Uh, and this implied run totals right there. Giants in very similar situation with 5.5 uh, implied total total against Javier Assad. Now Assad works deeper into games when he's on, he's efficient and can get it done, but he hasn't been on lately. Last five uh, games, 5.94 FIP. We've been waiting for this regression. We've thought it was coming and it has came. He has allowed six home runs in five games and now it's really nice hitting weather. It uh, could go either way and the Cubs bullpen hasn't been good either. So I think this game is an interesting one. If the bats start working right away. It could get real ugly for uh, either of these teams or or uh, either defense, I should say. And don't mind going there. 
Philadelphia versus Randy Vasquez. I already said I like it. The only thing is he's not allowing a hard, ton of hard contact, but Philadelphia hits the ball hard enough that he's fine. And there's some guys in that uh, Padre bullpen that have been giving it up. Uh, Pittsburgh versus Cincinnati. I don't love this one, but the implied run total is high enough that you got to consider it. And then Atlanta versus Reese Olsen. Reese Olsen, hard average or hard, uh, high hard contact rate, high average exit velocity. Braves hit the ball harder and further than anybody in the league. So you got to consider there could be a couple home runs there. Uh, Angels bullpen is terrible. Makes Milwaukee interesting. Uh, Texas versus Peterson. I mean, Peterson has a 4.2 FIP over his last 20. It's not like he's, you know, some amazing pitcher. He's at 6K on DraftKings. He can definitely get got, even though Texas hasn't been hitting lefties very well. Uh, outside of, you know, those ones, there's definitely some spots. I think the Cardinals are a little interesting. Padres are a little interesting. However, Christopher Sanchez has been very, very good and way better at home. And with this low uh, total, I think you can consider Sanchez as a pitcher today, even though we haven't really talked about him. His median projection just isn't there because he doesn't have big time K upside and Padres aren't striking out much. So it is a risky one that's going to go low on, but it could definitely get there. And that will do it for us today, guys. Have a good one. We will be back tomorrow. Peace.